Hi everybody, this is Rob Redman. Uh, welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at some kind of lighting methods. Now, rather than being a full in-depth tutorial on setting everything up and, and rendering using different lights, we're going to use it more as a comparison. Um, and I'm going to use this classroom scene, which is a part of the, the mod kit school pack, but you know the, the techniques and everything are applicable to, to any scene like this. Now, what we're looking at um, is different ways of managing uh, lighting using exterior lighting in a scene like this so you've got a, an opening in a room somewhere um, which is letting in the light um, now I've completely removed the materials from this scene so you can see purely the effect of the light um, and although that is slightly misleading in some ways because um, materials will reflect light in different ways and they might tint the color slightly um, I think it's a, a good way to look at how the light is working within a scene um, and I have a this is the same room um, and the same desk and everything and the same radiators windows uh, and lit in the same kind of way and you can see what's going on um, very clearly anyway let's jump into cinema 4d so we've got this classroom scene um, we, i've just removed everything apart from the one table and chair uh, all the other desks and everything um, and the blackboard and the stool all that kind of stuff that's all been removed uh, just for speed really and clarity uh, if we look at the side view we can see we've got four windows uh, and we've also got four of these hanging lights so we could take a look at using those as well uh, and if we just do a very quick render we'll just start off using a standard renderer without any ambient occlusion and without any global illumination um, and all we've got in the room is the room the floor the chair that's it so we'll see okay now we can see this is just using what Cinema 4D calls the default light and it's pretty ugly. Uh, there are some nasty dark shadows over here. There is, there's no kind of shadowing around any of the props. Um, it's picking up textures really horribly because all I've got is a, a bit of bump on the this white surface just to pick out some of the detail a little bit. Uh, and that looks pretty rough. Now if we just go ahead and add one light, we'll add this light to the scene and we'll lift it up and we'll pop it out to the side here so it's going to be shining through the window you can see it's just above the height of the room so you know that might give us a, a bit of a look and uh, really it doesn't quite work um, and the reason for this is because although the direction is right there's no shadows and we need to turn on some shadows for this to even start approximating anything realistic um, and the idea behind this video I'll just set that rendering um, is so you can see kind of how far you need to go in any given scene to start looking the way you want it to because you might not need a full-blown GI with you know fill lights and everything and a sky dome or an HDR you might not need any of that um, so we're going to look at how to replicate those kind of realistic looks that you might need um, but using the simplest tools possible so let's kill off that light and this time we're going to add um, a light dome so we'll go up here to scene objects and we'll add a sky let's just do a render with that straight away now nothing has changed from here to, compared to the first render he did except we've got this slight gray color here um, now I'm just going to take our normal material and drop that on the sky so you can see the difference and it will be exactly the same except that will be the same color as the room now the main difference that we're going to get here is if we turn on global illumination that sky object is going to give some kind of illumination to our scene i do just want to turn off specular because we don't really need any specular highlights here so i'll just turn that on start a render off now because i've got gi turned on you can see our pre-pass you can see these little dots where the photons are being worked out um, and you can now see that there's a bit of a now even though this is on the very first pass and now it's on the second pass you can already see that this is going to be a much more gentle less harsh looking render with more realistic shadows and that's because there's kind of information or light information being bounced around the scene and this is kind of the first step towards getting your scene to look like it's realistically lit let's just let this finish off that render is now finished 
and the lighting looks way way better now this is using a bit of a gray single color for the sky dome so the dome is wrapping all the way around the scene which means the lights bouncing up and it's bouncing in from every direction which isn't quite right but it makes a really good ambient lighting there are still some issues so the chair looks a little bit floaty there's no real kind of definition between the different areas so for that part all we would do is add some ambient occlusion this can be a good trick to just kind of grounding things in the scene and i'm just going to go back to global illumination now i've got this set to three bounces and ignore the ir and qmc setting that's just kind of that that's the, the kind of um, computations that the the render will make now i prefer this it gives a nice clean image with really smooth gi um, and using three bounces um, that's going to lighten up our interior because each photon will bounce around those extra times rather than just a single one which you get by default now i'm going to control click and drag this material and um, we'll just call this one sky because i'm going to apply that one to the sky just so it may, means i can change it more easily but now i've got that ambient occlusion when I set this render off, we should find that the chair and some of the details, the finer cracks and gaps between objects are going to be a bit more kind of detailed and delineated. And you'll be able to see there'll be a very slight shadow around all the joins and gaps between objects, as though the light's not quite penetrating to those parts as well as it as much as it would get around the larger areas. So I'll just pause this until it finishes rendering for you. OK, so that's looking a bit better again. You can see that the chair looks like it's actually sitting on the floor because there's a very slight amount of shadowing and the same under here. You can see there's a bit of shadowing there. Now that's not actual shadows. That is just the ambient occlusion doing its job. So wherever you find a join, an angled join between two objects, you're seeing this darkening. Now, one thing to remember with outdoor scenes uh, or scenes where there's exterior light coming in, sunlight or ambient light, is the color of shadows. Now I'm going to add, uh, I'm gonna use the Grayscale Gorilla. Um, I'm just gonna use the light kit um, and I'm gonna use the daylight to demonstrate this uh, just cause it's a, a, a quick and simple setup. So I'm just gonna go into the daylight and I'm just going to, I'm gonna change the color of this. Um, I find that a bit too peachy. Um, so I'm going to just warm, very slight warm light, uh, which I do want. I'm just going to go into my top view and probably rotate this around so that the light's coming in through the window. So this line here is showing the light, it's good height coming down there as well. Now I'm just going to kill off or hide from the renderer and editor my normal sky that I had there before. And I'm going to render this again. Um, now you can see that there's a sky built in with this light rig so we've got our daylight and we have a sky gradient already now i'm just going to tighten up the transition at the floor and i'm going to change the color of the sky which is not quite sky colored uh, i'm going to go for something just a bit more saturated for my top like so that's a, a bit closer to what a sky would be now I'm not going to worry about the shadow densities, I'm going to leave everything else as standard for now and I'm just going to render this again so that you see the difference to having a single light which is our sun, our light source, uh, and the ambient light which will be driven by this gradient, this blue gradient here. So I'll set that off and hopefully you'll be able to see the difference very clearly. So there you can see the difference and you can see that we've got some actual shadows and the light is actually coming into the room quite a bright way um, and we can see the window frames all shadowed out there. Now you can replicate this again in a slightly different way um, using area lights. So let's add an area light to the scene if we can just move that across go to our lights let's choose an area light. Now let's just turn this round it's going to our side view so we can turn our light round just 90 degrees I'm going to shrink this down just move it into position by the window there 
Now you can put this outside the window or you can put it inside the window. Um, but I would say put it outside. If you're using a sky dome, then you can bring it inside the window. Um, it all really depends on whether you've got glass, which is going to be visible in the scene. Um, so I would personally just for this example, I would pop it on the outside um, with the, the Z axis pointing in and just have a look there. Let's just set the light up before we duplicate it. I'm going to warm it up. So I'm going to just warm up the color of that light a bit, not too strong like so. And I'm going to turn on shadows and I'll set this up rendering and then I'll talk about shadows again in a minute. Um, let's just go back into our side view. Um, now I've got that light set up. I'm just going to control click and drag just to replicate it. And, and this is going to be kind of a bright ambient light. You can already see this is quite bright here. Um, and I haven't set any fall off or anything because this isn't really uh, about a light which is kind of near in the scene. This is to replicate the sky and the lights in the, or the sunlight coming around maybe through a hazy sky so we don't have harsh shadows. Um, and in that case, you don't want fall off. You don't want the intensity dropping away from the window. Um, you want the, the scene to, to work on that itself. So I'm going to set this off rendering again, and this will show you the difference between using a, a kind of a, uh, what you would say is a infinite light, which is kind of what the light kit does. Uh, that sunlight we used previously is, is kind of like using an infinite light and a sky dome uh, together. So this is using area lights, which is um, a slightly different approach again. So let's set that off. Uh, I'll just set that rendering. So there you go, this is using the area lights with the lights just kind of the other side of the, the window. Um, and you can see that although the lighting looks quite nice, there's some directional problems going on which really don't work very well. Now let's take all these lights and just bring them back a touch. If we bring those back so that they're kind of, well let's bring them inside the room just so we can see what the difference is like there. Um, because sometimes you'll find that you need to do that. Um, and also I'm going to turn on my skylight again, or this, this sky object, um, but with that material that's applied to it, I'm going to add a blue gradient just in the color channel, um, which I might copy over to the luminance channel as well. So I'm just going to add a gradient and make this a simple V gradient. And I'm going to just, I'm going to go for a, a fairly unsaturated green for kind of a ground color. Uh, so I'm just going to bring that to there. I'm going to keep the horizon pretty much white. Uh, I might add a, a hint of blue, but not too much. And then what will be the top of the sky is going to be really quite a deep blue, like so. Uh, and I'll probably... It's not quite right. Let's make that a bit more like so. Okay, so this is our gradient for the sky I am going to take that I'm just going to copy that channel and paste it into the luminance just so we get a little bit of light information from it as well um, and you can see that I've done the wrong one so let's take uh, I'll just duplicate that copy that onto there and we'll take this newly duplicated sky and put that onto the sky and let's render this and see what we get. And I'm hoping that we get a little bit of blue showing in the kind of ambience of this light as well. So here we've got the lights on the inside of the room and you can see they're probably a little bit bright and this wall is getting too much of that light. Um, but we've got some nice ambience working quite well. And you can see that the sky has this gentle gradient and there's a bit of blue away from the direct light there. Um, the one thing that we're really missing is that the room itself is either lit with this warm color, and we'll ignore the hot spot there for a bit, um, but the shadows are all just a kind of a bit black. Um, and although this trick usually works better in outside shots, it can work quite nicely on the inside as well. So if you go and select those lights, uh, and you go to the shadow properties, if you make these shadows a really kind of dark blue gray, 
and then render again you find generally speaking it doesn't always work and it depends if you've got an overcast sky this isn't going to be quite as realistic um, but let's set this rendering and uh, you should see that with the blue tint to the shadows that this works just a little bit better so it's um, a subtle change and I'm hoping you can pick it up in a video but just that slight change to a bluer shadow uh, and it is subtle um, but it does work quite a lot now so far we've only been looking at using shadow maps and there's still possibly a little bit of funkiness going on around the, the shadows for this chair so let's go back and kill off the area lights and we'll keep the sky how it is so we get that kind of blueness now because I copied the um, the gradient from that sky channel into the luminance channel this will actually light our scene with the blue kind of built in so if we do a render now with just the sky lighting the scene let's see what happens and we should find that this is actually quite a, a realistic if soft look but without any kind of strong direct light which we can add back in afterwards um, or we can play around with some of the um, the GI settings for the light itself okay so looking pretty good we've got a nice strong sky We've got a kind of hint of blue, uh, which is possibly a little overpowering here. So we could either go for adding a light into the scene or we could play around with the settings um, of the, the gradient. But before we do that, let's just open up that sky material. Let's go to illumination and up here we have a couple of settings and this one of them is for generating GI. So we can actually desaturate the, the blueness from here or any color that we have in here we could bring that right down let's take this right down to about 20% um, and see what we get from that uh, there's going to be quite a big change I would have thought so let's just render that out and you can see the result much grayer far less saturated um, but we can still see the blue in the sky um, which makes you think actually that was too much um, so I'm going to bring that back up to about 80% actually let's go for 85% um, and I'm just going to show you you can increase the strength of that sky you don't have to go in and kind of try and boost the luminance at all you can actually make it generate more illumination data by just increasing this now let's boost this quite substantially let's go to about 300 percent and see what the difference is and don't forget that I've uh, increased the saturation back up so this is going to be bluer again um, but with a much stronger light so we should see and you can already see from the pre-pass that there's some extra brightness going on around the windows. So we can see this is now brightened up a little bit and you can see it's brightened up. You know, this area around here particularly looks brighter and you can see that I think there's just a, a, a nicer level of light by boosting the sky um, and that really does work quite well. Now we still have a slightly grey looking ambient occlusion and that we can fix just by going into the ambient occlusion settings and if we want to kind of boost that blueness of the shadow areas we can make the ambient occlusion we can make it any color uh, in fact to show you exactly what it's doing why don't I make it red and then you can see the difference much more clearly so if we wanted to boost the blueness and the ambience of a, a bright summer day um, we could make this blue but I'm going to show you because the video window is small and uh, Vimeo although good quality is not going to be perfect I think this is probably the best way of showing you what ambient occlusion is doing just to kind of boost your details that shows you about as clear as it's possible to be uh, what ambient occlusion does for your scene and how it can add some of the details so even along the kind of join between the, the chair's bottom edge here and the floor you can see there's a, a, a red tint um, from that ambient occlusion and it really does help to kind of set the mood of the scene and to boost your shadows so don't just turn ambient occlusion on make sure that you're coloring it appropriately to your scene and it will really help so obviously red's not a good color for the scene but it helps to show you what's going on um, so I'll set that back to a dark blue uh, let's go for well a dark blue gray I want some blue there but I don't want it too saturated because that will look false as well um, so that's using just a sky now if we want to have a strong warm light let's go back in and we'll add our infinite light to the scene now I'm just going to lift this up so you can see what it is 
Now you can see we've got a spot there, which is a, a way of moving the light around uh, or kind of the focus of our light. Um, we can add a shadow to the scene if we want and we can move the angle. So the spot here is, let's go into a, a middle view so you can see more clearly what's going on. This is kind of the focus of our scene. That's where we want the sun to be aiming at. And then we can just place that, rotate it round. And it just gives us an extra kind of way of seeing what's going on. So I'm gonna bring that down. So the sun is shining in through the windows. Let's go into my front view here and just make sure it's gonna clear. Basically I want the light to be able to go through the window and light up my chair. Uh, and I can do this from further back and just draw that line out. Let's go into my top view. And you can see that the actual sunlight is going through that pillar towards the chair now. So I need to just drag that across and rotate it just a little bit more like so. So that will be shining through the window onto my chair in all my directions, which is good. That's exactly what I want. So I need to choose my light. I need to give it a color. So I'm gonna warm that up like so. I'm gonna leave the strength as it is. The shadows, I'm gonna do what I did before, but I'm, instead of using shadow maps, I'm gonna use ray traced shadows. I'm just gonna go in and give that the same kind of blue gray um, like so. Now using ray traced shadows means that I'll get the pattern of the windows showing on the floor quite well. Uh, let's just shut that material manager down and just make sure I've got everything set as I want. Now this should give me a kind of a blue ambience that we've got from our sky here. Uh, in fact, I do want to just bring down that gradient just a little. I'm going to bring that mixer down just to get a bit more of the blue. Let's go into there, make sure that's all right. Bring that one down too, just so we get a bit more blue in the sky. Um, and once this render's done, I think we're gonna be fairly happy. But if we want to change the balance, I don't need to come faffing around in the, the light material or the, in the, the sky here in the light. I don't need to go changing the intensity. I can if I want. Uh, and that's a fairly interactive way of working, although it's not overly realistic. Um, but what I can do is I can take my sky material and I can go into the illumination here and I can up and down the strength and saturation which I find is a much more kind of controllable way of getting a decent sky or get, getting a decent balance between the illumination from the sky and a sunlight. So let's just set that one off and see what we get with our default kind of um, direct light. Okay, so there we go. Uh, the balance between the brightness of the sky and that strong sunlight is probably not quite right. I think the sky is probably a bit too bright, but then I did boost it up to 300%. Let's knock that back down to 100 and see what we get again. But you can instantly tell that's much more realistic. Um, I'm just gonna warm that light up just a little bit more uh, and we'll just set this off rendering again. And I think this is gonna be it. I think that's gonna be a fairly decent overview of how you can achieve and uh, decent natural lighting. Um, now, I mentioned earlier on about using the area lights inside the windows. If you're using this method with a sunlight and a sky dome, but you want to boost the inside lighting, uh, the kind of the, the bounce lights that you've got, you can add in those area lights in the windows. I would use them just on the inside and make sure they're double-sided, warm them up to the color of your sky rather than your sunlight. Um, but reduce the intensity down to somewhere probably around 20% for this uh, and it will help your scene render details a little bit faster generally speaking certainly with unbiased renderers like um, Maxwell or V-Ray if you're using a, a render engine like that then sometimes using those kind of fill lights um, will help clean things clean up just that bit quicker okay so that's the the kind of final render using the sunlight and the skylight now because the materials are all flat and dull, it doesn't have quite the pop you'd expect, but it certainly gives you the good kind of lighting with decent color from the ambience of the sky, um, which is shining down here on the floor. So you've got that kind of red, blue tint, um, sorry, the, the blue tint here and the redder tint on the, on the sunlight. And the two balance really well. Now, 
one final thing to remark on here is that using this kind of split between a, an ambient dome and a sunlight means that you can leave the dome once set up you can pretty much leave it as is um, and then all your lighting can be changed kind of fairly fairly well on the fly um, just by taking your light here and moving it around so I could just as easily flick that sunlight round let's just light it from a slightly different direction so you know if I want my light to come in still onto the chair let's aim at the chair again but from a different direction I'll just do one more final render so this is coming in kind of through the next window along so maybe a, a later part of the afternoon um, and this will change the balance of light completely the shadows will move to approximate the the later time of day um, you could warm the light up and bring that sunlight down so that it's a, a more horizontal angle um, really warm it up to get that kind of golden hour glow um, but you can still leave that ambience because the sky is still going to be blue um, although you can in, start introducing maybe some oranges and pinks just to give that real kind of sunset loveliness um, but generally speaking that's how I would uh, tend to light an exterior scene using the Cinema 4D um, tools that you have available and um, it works really well and hopefully you'll see in just a few seconds what that slight change of position from the sunlight does so we still have a nice sky we still have lovely shadows and light um, but it's just completely different feel from the previous render uh, and that's looking really nice so i hope that's been of some help and it's actually explained and compared a few different lighting methods and tools for you um, i'm going to look at lighting using interior lights so we use these hanging lights using um, a bulb material we'll do that in another video and we'll look at how to balance maybe a, a nighttime light coming in um, and using luminous materials inside a scene and in that one i'm going to look at using some hdris as well which you can use for daytime and nighttime and all kinds of bizarre stuff and um, so i hope that's been of some help i'm rob redman and i'll see you all again next time